Well, hello, tubers. Hope everybody's tubing down their favorite stream. Well, after lunch, I had four big Bufords, two large fries, and a vanilla milkshake. I went into Walmart to fight them for a loaf of bread and some milk to take it home. Uh, Kentucky football is just about as frustrating as what I went through there. Uh, midday. Everybody, can you hand that to me? Can you get that off that shelf? They put it up there so high, you just can't reach it. I mean, I, and the aisles ain't big enough anyway for me to squeeze down with my cart. And everybody just crammed in there. They shoved the aisles closer together so they could put more product in there. And then they shove everything on the top shelf. These little old ladies can't reach it. You know, what turned out to be a, you know, just an in and out. My in and out burger turned out to be deep fried. <laughs> Took me forever. You know, look for the man with the beard. He'll help you. <laughs> yeah. But I've never been one to uh, be mean or say, no, I'm not going to do that. It's just frustrating, you know, going there and trying to get your stuff done. It's kind of like Kentucky football. Uh, who has more to lose this week, Mark Stoops or Billy Napier? I think Billy Napier's lost like last year's Easter egg. I ain't sure he's even coherent enough to know that he's a gainful. Does he even know he's a head coach at Florida? <laughs> and then you got Mark Stoops. A lot of people call him human baked potato. I have no idea where he got that name, man. I, I would have come up with something a whole lot better than that. Uh, you know, Barney Rubble. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's endless, the... Uh, the hilarious things you could call stoops, but uh, the friar tuck, you know, the fighting monk, uh, absolute best hair in all of college sports. But uh, Mark Stoops, I think, has more to lose. He's got nine million dollars. He's got nine million reasons why he has more to lose than Billy Napier. Uh, stoops has got all them rick houses. He's storing his, or, you know, aging his bourbon in. He's got all the bourbon plants, the ABC, the licenses, the, the, the tastings, the whole nine up here, you know, I mean, they threw out, Kentucky did, will treat you good at first if you're a, you know, a head coach out here, but I think Stoops has got way too many problems to be running Calipari down at Midnight Madness, uh, even the women's basketball coach for Kentucky, you ain't won nothing, uh, you wouldn't even be an assistant coach on Calipari's team, <laughs> all right, uh, you're going to have to show the state I can tell you, I mean, you shouldn't do that to begin with. But all right, I, you know, Stoops, you need to be down there watching game film. You need to be doing something other than messing with the offensive coordinator. Let the man do his job. Let him do what he's brought in here to do. You recruited for a fast tempo offense, and you right, right before you know the season starts, you decided you wanted to be a slow, methodical, power running game. You don't have you, – your running backs are not over 200 pounds. Why am I pointing all this stuff out? Why am I pointing out that our, our quarterback is a pocket passer and you're not going to stick a guy in there that can actually complete the assignment because of the plays you're drawing up? You're having to roll the quarterback out because our line is terrible. If I was a defensive lineman in college sports, me at my age and the shape that I'm in, I would not have any fear whatsoever lining up against Kentucky's offensive line. They'd have to double tick. <laughs> They'd have to crack back block. Uh, they are not stopping me from getting through there. Uh, so I don't suspect they're going to stop anybody else, especially Florida this weekend. Now, my whole life, Florida's been known as having speed. Unbelievable. Unbelievable speed in the league. And deep and physical lines of scrimmage. They ain't had that in a long time. Really before Billy Napier. Uh, Dan Mullins did a terrible job recruiting. McElwain was more worried about, you know, the speed than he really was the size. I mean, just, you know, they, Florida's deteriorated over the years. 
to be a worse program than what Kentucky is, really. Uh, and they very well may just blow us out, but they're still a worse program than we are. Uh, when you get down to the, the X's and O's, nuts and bolts of this thing, uh, Billy Napier's not even sniffing $9 million, so... Stoops goes down there and blows this, I'm pretty sure that's that should be it. You know, the people are not going to tolerate it. Honestly. Uh, but I think uh, I think Kentucky has way, way more to lose than Florida. They weren't even projected to uh, open a magazine and look at last year's bowl game this year. Um, they were so far out of bowl reach. Uh, but here they are. You know, they beat Kentucky. They're probably going to go to a bowl. And uh, we'll have to beat Auburn, Louisville, and Murray to go to a bowl. And that's more likely what's going to happen. That way you can get Florida and Kentucky in there, uh, along with uh, a few other teams. You know, it just opens up so much. So I don't suspect Kentucky's going to go in there and just handle business like we did last year. Ray Davis ain't walking through them doors. Uh, Chip, more likely they're going to trot him out there and, and uh, run him till he fumbles. Might even run him twice till you know, he fumbles twice. Uh, he's not ready. And he's questionable, and they've got him on that. That's what they're going to do. Uh, they're going to have Brock sit back here and pat on the ball and get sacked, and they're just going to try to run the ball and control the clock. And uh, instead of putting Gavin out there and actually running this offense the way Bush Hamden wants to, they're going to do Mark Stoops's. Well, he knows what works. He knows what it takes to beat Florida. Now, any other year I'd agree with you, but you recruited for Bush Hamden. That's what you done. And now you're trying to run it for Mark Stoops. It's not going to work. That's why you're losing to a terrible South Carolina, a Vanderbilt, and now you're fixing to go down there and lose to a coach, Billy Napier, who, uh, in all honesty, has absolutely no business being a head football coach, period. <laughs> uh, he's terrible. And... Uh, the only thing I can say good is going to come out of that will be the post-game interview where he makes a bigger fool of himself than he already has. So, and then we'll get to listen to Mark Stoops the same old song and dance. Well, you got to pony up the NIL. Literally said, you got to pony up the NIL after the Vanderbilt loss. You know, they, they they spend more money on NIL than we did. You've got more people going to go to the NFL than Vanderbilt has. All right. Brown and Keys, and probably one more of those receivers will go to the NFL. Uh, Chip, if he ever gets healthy, will probably go to the NFL. You got a couple of linemen that will go to the NFL on offense. You, know, uh, you got one long snapper will probably go. Our kicker is definitely going to go to the NFL. He ain't missed but one kick, and it was tipped. A lot of scrimmage the whole time. He was it. Kentucky. Uh, I don't even know how many people off the defense is going to go to the NFL. Walker, uh, J.J. Wright, Pop Dumas Johnson, Oxidine, Hayes, Ford. They're going to the NFL based solely off size. Uh, and if you think size doesn't matter, that's the reason why Will Levis is in the NFL right now. All right? He's just a big old dude. He can take a lot of punishment. You, know, you can't just shove some guy out there in the NFL. They're, you're going to get... You're just throwing your money away. But these are people are big enough that can take the punishment and look the part of the NFL, if nothing else. So, yeah, when you're talking about South Carolina and Vanderbilt, <laughs> uh, you're losing to that, right? Uh, well, Kentucky always bounces back after a loss, man. Show me that. Show me that. We lost to South Carolina, then turned around and lost to Georgia. Where, where's the bounce back at? You know, that's a game Stoops lost for us, really. Uh, not saying we would have won it, but we, I mean, we definitely didn't win it because of his decision. In the end, we don't know what would have happened if it went the other way. Uh, so I think Kentucky has more to lose than Florida at this juncture. Uh, Stoops' is $9 million contract. Signed that two years ago. They went out and lost to Vanderbilt. Fast forward to this year. He's he's regressed you know, instead of progress. Uh, we're doing the same thing plus worse. Uh, 
was 75, that's gone. Uh, you're going to be struggling to get to 66. I'm not sure what you can do. Uh, but if you beat Florida, I like our chances a whole lot better of making a bowl game than having to beat, well, you can't lose those three games, the end. Uh, and you may even have to upset somebody. All right. To even get a decent bowl that you probably are not going to be able to do. So, six to six is still on the table till, till uh, you know, midnight Saturday. <laughs> uh, I just can't see. This is just two terrible teams with two terrible coaches. Stoops is two and ten. Nowhere near the the record he should have for $9 million. And uh, basically, Joker Phillips got a better record than you do. You bring in Bush Hamden for an offensive coordinator from Boise State, you don't even use the guy. You know, you, you, you've really tied one hand behind his back, took the playbook away, and expect him to draw up something every now and then for this, that, or the other. And when it doesn't work, you act, you're just mad. I can see the frustration on Hamden's face every time he gets in front of a camera. And I'd be, I'd be surprised if he can come back to Kentucky next year, he'll probably try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd also be surprised if Stoops makes it through this year. Uh, I kind of, I kind of figured he would make it to the. He's got two years left this year, and next year. They've already come out and all, but said that the athletic director did. So this right here may cut that short. You go down there and you blow this at Florida. The fans are expecting to win. Right. Ole Miss, when's the last time you thought to yourself, well, man, I don't want to play Ole Miss. They're, Ole Miss has never been good in my lifetime, ever. So beating them, I mean, I don't, okay. I don't care what they're ranked, what their four state university was ranked. FSU was ranked high at the beginning of the year. Mm. Look where they are. At least they had a run there in, during my lifetime that was great under Bobby Bowden. But I, for the life of me, I can't even remember Ole Miss's head coaches. Any player from Ole Miss to even do anything in my lifetime to amount to anything. Uh, I'm sure they've had one or two come through their program. I mean, but as a whole, they, I mean, they were acting like they were royalty. Uh, they're Kentucky, just in a different shade of blue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even their fan base has finally, you know, got on to it, got on there and was talking about, I can't believe y'all beat us. I'm like, why not? We have lost to Kentucky. Act like that's the worst thing in the world. Well, I mean, how you figure that? You know, when I was growing up, when Kentucky, the worst years Kentucky had, Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, Mississippi State at home were three games we always thought we might have a shot of winning. We knew we weren't going to a bowl game, but, you know, if we could just beat two of the three of that, we had a good year. I mean, you know, you know five wins, you know, Kentucky's moving up. Uh, normally it was three or four. You know, we weren't good when I was growing up. But Ole Miss was always right there. So I don't see how their fan base or uh, the media or anybody all of a sudden thinks Lane Kiffin – is automatically going to elevate that program to elite status. At any rate, uh, I think uh, Kentucky has more to lose this weekend than Florida. Florida wouldn't even pick to sniff a playoff. Uh, they really weren't allowed to look in magazines at playoff pitchers from last year. That's how bad they were projected to be, but yet here they are. Uh, and if they beat Kentucky, they're keeping Napier. You better believe that. So I don't understand why everybody on the, the planet is wanting Florida to keep Napier because he's – it's absolutely Saturday Night Live whenever he gets in front of a microphone. And, it, you know, the humiliation, embarrassment he's bringing upon the, the University of Florida. The only thing that would make this even better for the world is if – they did the interview in front of the carving of the promise on the side of the building. 
have him stand in front of Tebow's picture and then, you know, the promise Tebow made after they lost that they have carved on the side of the building and have Napier stand up there and uh, give reason why he run 12 men out there and he would ask for an ice cream and talk about it's all the players' fault. You know, yeah, you know what? It's all on them. So, I'm Big Barney Ross. I think Saturday, uh, one way or another, uh, Kentucky is going to get the answers that they need. Uh, Stoops pulls this out. We'll probably make a bowl game, and they'll keep him next year, no matter how terrible or bad or embarrassing this. They're going to suffer through the next two years and then uh, buy him out, or he'll be gone, or he'll figure something out. Something else will happen. If he goes down and loses to Florida, I cannot see. Even this idiotic athletic director we've got uh, keeping somebody because the pressure is going to be so – the pressure is going to be more than that of a hand grenade. All right? uh, so I, that's that's one one thing I can actually look forward to this weekend. I got my, I got my three Bs lined up, and uh, I'm ready to get this over with, and I can just breathe a sigh of relief. I can already watch the game in pure comfort because I know uh, after losing to Vanderbilt, that, that was the season we're done. Uh, now I'm just watching for material that I can call in and uh, and talk about on Mark Stoops' show. and uh, I got some pretty funny stuff, I'd like to say. Uh, but really... The last hope all of us have in the state is making a ball game at six and six. And if he takes that away from us, then it's just you know open fire. You know fires at this time. Rotate your selector switch from safe to fire and watch your lane. And stoops will pop up down there. Uh, this is exactly what's about to happen. So one way or another, I can already breathe pretty comfortably knowing what he's already done, and then uh, we lose this here. We want to have a shot at a ball game. And uh, I can just go on about conduct my business stress-free as usual. So y'all let me know in the comments who do you think has more to lose, Florida or Kentucky. Uh, I think Kentucky does. And honestly, uh, it's a battle of two terrible teams who – have a lot of injuries with two terrible quarterbacks. Uh, well, one terrible quarterback. The other one's out indefinitely. And the uh, other guy's a uh, freshman that you're throwing out there at game seven. <laughs> uh, so whichever one of them plays better, whichever defense plays better, uh, who has less penalties or turnovers or both, will probably win this uh, 17 to 20 or 13 to 20 or 14 to 7, uh, something like that. Uh, but in the end, it's just been an absolute disaster of a season. And for $9 million, you know, I could have figured out, uh, I could, they should have just donated that to Fish and Wildlife here in this state. <laughs> Y'all think about it. I'm out of here.